appreciate seeing everyone tonight, and we want to get right into the text uh, tonight, our topic uh, tonight. Well, let's have a word of prayer and before we get into our, our lesson tonight. We welcome those online with us as well. Let us together pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the time that you afforded us to assemble. We pray that as we study your word tonight, dear God, we will recognize the necessity of obedience. And may we always understand that as we go to and fro, may we always be mindful of our behavior, our mindset, which precedes how we act. Guard, may we guard our hearts, guard our eyes, and stay focused on the, the work to be done. Encouraging the saints one to another, teaching the gospel to those in need, and living in such a way where mankind can see the love we have for thee. Bless those who are here. We thank you for them. Please be with those who just do not see the need. May we recognize that time is short and do all we can while we can. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, saints, let's, let's go to work tonight for a few minutes. The necessity of obedience, the necessity of obedience is what we want to talk about tonight. And uh, and again, uh, just as a reminder, as it relates to uh, I'm old school Bible school teacher. So when I say old school, somebody raise your hand. What does that mean? When I say I'm an old school Bible school teacher, what does that mean? So I don't know what I think you didn't raise your hands. Just looking, but I don't I think you said he's got an old mind. I think that's what you said, Brother Slocum. Brother Slocum, thank you on behalf of the Slocum family for raising your hand. Go ahead, brother. It's going to be book, chapter, and verse. And uh, you ask me anything that's not related to the lesson, I'm just going to look at you and say next time. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't play. So just to be clear, we just we made, made that clear. The necessity of obedience, the necessity of obedience. What does it mean to be obedient? What does it mean to be obedient? Brother Slocum. Follow the rules as set. Okay. Anyone else? Obedient. Yes, Sister Trinity. To do what was asked, to follow the rules. I like it. I saw another hand. I thought maybe. Yes, go ahead. Follow directions, follow the rules to do what is expected. Go to Hebrews chapter five. Hebrews, the fifth chapter. I want to give you some scriptures as we outline. Welcome to those we have uh, online. Jordan, how many we got online? Just a number. 45. Oh, 25. 25. That, that beats what we have in this auditorium. So out of that 25, uh, I, I, I need to have for y'all to be here next Wednesday, Lord willing. Amen. If you're able. But it's good that you're with us. Uh, so 25 online. So Hebrews chapter 5. Is where we're going. Let's go ahead and pick up a pace a little bit. Hebrews chapter 5 and looking at verse 9. Uh, well, verse 8 and 9, contextually, we're talking about obedience. Though he were a son, to whom is he, who is, to whom is the Hebrew writer talking about? Or of whom is he talking about? Brother Aldridge. Jesus, though he were a son, that's a capital S in your Bible, isn't it? So it's the son of whom? Son of God, the only begotten son of God. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So when we talk about being Christ-like, when we talk about obedience, was Christ exempt, excluded from being obedient? No. Hebrew writer says, although he is the only begotten son of God, he too had to learn how to be obedient. To do, I think it, uh, somebody said, to do what was asked, to follow the rules, to basically, as we say in sports, run the play. You know, when you think about, uh, and I got a binder up here with me tonight, think about a playbook, Can anybody, you know, a playbook, a, a diet. If you want to kind of follow a diet, it is a, it's a guide. So now how did Jesus, and the answer's in the text, how did Jesus learn obedience? Answers in the text. Raise your hand. Let me know. Go ahead, Daryl. By the things that he suffered. Now, what can suffering teach us? Jesus learned obedience by the things which he suffered. The ultimate suffering was what? Hanging on the cross. Was that, was that enjoyable? Do we have context? Do we have scripture that speaks to Jesus uh, saying, 
do I, he wasn't being disobedient, but let this cup, say it, so it's hard, you lip synced it, pass from me. So what does a cup pass from me mean? What does that mean? Is there an alternative? He was not being disobedient. He's just, it's painful. Jesus Christ was in the flesh. But what's that next word? It starts with an N. Never. I'm waiting on y'all. Nevertheless, not, not, no, no, not my will. But, so in other words, I am suffering. But while in the midst of suffering, I did not forget the playbook. When we suffer, when we are emotional, when we are going through something, what is our tendency as human beings? Sister Hart. So we complain, and when we complain, we want to do what? Do we alter the playbook? Justify what we say? It's called human nature. It's called human nature. So when we talk about discipline, being a disciple, being disciplined. Good evening, sis. Being disciplined is there's a pattern of behavior that may go against our own will. So when Jesus talked about, and we want to just give you Hebrews 5 and 9, speaks to you 5, 8 and 9. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Now here's where we come in. Hebrews 5 and verse 9. And being made perfect. Perfect means complete. He was faithful until death. Hebrews 5 verse 9. And being made perfect, he, Jesus Christ, became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Our context, our lesson tonight is the necessity of obedience. Fill in the blanks for me. For God so loved the world that he, so God loved us, his love was manifested, revealed with deeds. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ sent from God, given from God as a sacrifice for our sins. The Bible says, Hebrews 5, 8, 9, he was that son that was given. And just because, just, although he were the son, he was obedient until death. And he became, the answer's in the text, Hebrews 5 and 9, being made perfect, he became the blank. He became the, starts with an A, it's in the text. He became the author. Now, what, what, who, what does an author do? But now put that in, let's make some spiritual application. But he became the author of eternal salvation. The author. What's an author do? He became the author of eternal. Better yet, hold this one up. He became the author of eternal salvation. So the playbook is not about man. It's about God doing his will. He became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. So Christ was obedient to the Father. We must be obedient to everybody clear. Our lesson, I'll keep hitting this nail, the necessity of obedience. Go to the book of James. Go to James chapter 1, please. James chapter 1. We'll give you a, a few scriptures tonight that reinforce this basic concept of obedience. Take it one book over, James chapter 1. James, the first chapter. Can we be obedient just by speaking? I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Does that happen in the world? Are there, are there some, uh, you know, honoring God with our lips? Is that, is that enough? James chapter 1, verse 22. You are correct. That is not enough. There's nothing wrong with saying, thank you, Lord. Nothing wrong with saying, you know, praise God. Thank you, Lord. But what are we doing? James chapter 1, verse 22. 
James speaks to that. The Bible says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So we can, the word deceit, we can trick, we can fool ourselves. Lip service is not enough. Hearing God's word is just not enough. And that's why the same James in James 4 and verse 17, let's run over there. Let's make these scriptures. James chapter 4 and verse 17, James says, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. How do we know? To, how do we know how to do good? Got to hear his word. You are told parents raise children. Don't touch the stove. They go over and say, oh, that looks nice. It lights up nice and orange. <laughs> you learn through that suffering, right? But you were told what not to do. Don't touch the stove. How does that relate to us? Do we have to, quote, unquote, bump our heads sometimes? And when I say bump our heads, you don't know what I mean by that. Do we have to, I mean, don't touch the stove. Ouch. I'm not doing that again. But be ye hear, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving our own selves. Many a child of God has heard. Many people have heard the word of God, but we have to do his will. So as we think about what James says in James chapter one, be ye doers of the word. And not hearers only deceiving your own selves. James chapter four, if you know to do good and you don't do it, to him it is what? Sin. Go ahead, sis. James chapter one, verse 22. Yes. I understand. Yes. I understand. The church as a whole. I love the question, sis, and uh, just to, for the benefit of those online. Why did we deviate from the playbook? Why is there so many differences even within the Lord's church on being basically just doers of the word, doers of the word? So where do we find the constant? Where do we find the God? The word. So why would you have in some places women serving in the on the table? And the word hasn't changed. The word didn't say that. But that's man not being. It's it's one word. It's disobedience. It's not because God has made it confusing and God said, well, Brother Hart had this vision, this revelation. People have to find it's it's another source. It starts with selfishness. We want to please ourselves. And later on in the lesson, you're going to find out when Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, you must first do what? It starts with a D. D not. So the quick and easy answer, because I, I got to press on, is. When you get deviations from scripture, it's not God's fault. We know that already. It's man doing his will and not the Lord's will. It's it's as simple as that, sadly. And what can that do? That can confuse people. Well, I see this over here and this over here. But the Bible says in First Corinthians 1 and verse 10, you all speak the same thing. So God is not the author of confusion. So you, you have scriptures that point out, just stick with the playbook. And yes, it may seem too simple from the world. It may seem like, why don't you all do this and you do that? Keep it simple. Keep it simple. And so to, thank you for the question, sis. And it is an ongoing problem. And let's go to Luke 6 and 46. Because see, Jesus addressed this somewhat. Well, you know, not somewhat. Jesus addressed it. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. And I hope you're getting these scriptures down. 
We started in Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. Even though he was the son of God, he had to learn obedience by the things which he suffered. We recognize in James, be, don't just be hearers, but be doers of the word. But now in Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, we also gave you James 4 and 17 for those taking notes. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, because the word Lord, what does the word Lord mean? Lord. See, you know, we talk about in Acts chapter 2, God made him, God the Father made him, Jesus the Christ, both Lord and Christ. Lord and Christ. Jesus is Lord, and he's, Christ is not his last name. I'm Gail Nelson. He's Jesus the Christ. Amen? So God made him Lord and Christ. Lord. Y'all heard the question. Lord. Jesus is Lord. We sing the song, Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer. How I love him. Jesus is Lord. Thoughts? Elders are not to lord over the flock. Give you some context clues. Yes, sir, JV. What, is, what does Lord mean? The question is, Jesus is Lord. What does Lord mean? Yes. I like where you're going in Japan. Go ahead. Understood. Buddhism is prevalent. I like it. I like it. So what JV said, he used a reference of Eastern culture where you have lords. These are men, but they have a status. They have power. They have authority. And Lord speaks to the, not a, the authority. So when we talk about, a, so the Lord's church does not belong to man. Hence, you have elders in every flock. They have over. We have oversight. We watch for your souls. We have to make sure we uh, do things according to God's plan, as opposed to no. This is what I want. No, 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 no. It's we got. There's a humility with obedience. Make sure you note that there's humility with obedience. So when we talk about Lord JV. To your point, it's we, Christ is the authority. God, Christ is the authority, and so that's why Jesus says in Luke six and verse forty six. Let me make this point. Uh, why call me you all there in Luke 6 and 46? I don't want to quote it. I want to make sure you all can read it with me. And why call ye me Lord, Lord? If I am the authority and do not the things which I say. Jesus is basically saying, if you're going to be this, you know, your recognition of my authority should result in your obedience. If, and I'm not saying this has ever happened to me, it might have happened once or twice, but I'm driving my car. Y'all see where I'm going next? And I see some lights behind me. Don't smile, sister hard. I need to be serious. Man. And let's say I choose, I see it. I, I see the red and blue lights. I recognize their authority. I would patrol in this case. I was literally heading to teach and I was running a few minutes behind and let's say my right foot got a little heavy like Latisse got a little heavy and they were like you need to slow down yes sir I'm on my way to worship the Lord and I was I wasn't didn't want to use that I said, okay I got to he blessed me with some paper and I held it I went on and I went on to service my point is I saw the authority and I chose to pull over and, and park the car and suffer the consequence of going too fast. Full disclosure. I could have said, no, no, no. I see how you patrol. Whatever. We can be disobedient. But when it comes, so Jesus is saying, why call me Lord, Lord, and you don't even do what I'm asking you to do, what I'm expecting you to do. Everybody clear? So when, just to make answer the other basic point, then Daryl, I'm coming to you. You had your hand up next. When you talk about in Acts chapter 2, God made him Lord and Christ. See, what I love about this, Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So he has the authority, he's the, is the anointed one to be, to suffer. Think about that. Look at this dichotomy. 
He is the authority, but he's also the sacrificial lamb. Dying in such a way that's a publicly humiliating. Dying in such a way that's despised, but yet he's the authority. Did everybody catch that? Wow, look at God. No, if I'm gonna have, I'm gonna obey somebody. I need, I don't want to die. I want to. No, that's God's plan. So yes, He is the authority, and He is the anointed one, chosen of God, the Messiah. He's gonna deliver you through His suffering, and you will do what He says. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord. That's why we sing the song, "My Redeemer." He paid the price for us. Daryl, you've been very patient. Go ahead, sir. Master, Lord, master, one to whom you are in subjection. I like that. Very good. Very good. So Luke 6, 46 speaks to his authority. But not only that, when we think about obedience, it shows respect. It shows our reverence. But you know what, folks? There's one other word. See if you can fill We'll go to the scripture. It's John 14 and 15. If you love me, blank. Raise your hand if you fill in that blank. If you love me, Audrey, just very quick. Yes, sir. If you love me, Brother David, say it again. John chapter 14 and verse 15 is the scripture reference. If you love me, my command. Let's pause for a minute. Oh, the, our lesson, the necessity of obedience. I'm going to throw down the cadence a little bit. If you love me, keep my commandments. So obedience is a matter of love. Love you, Lord. If you love someone, do you want to disappoint them? If you love someone, do you want to disrespect them? If you love someone, you want to live peaceably with someone you love. As opposed to an enemy, do you want to be around your enemy? Probably not. <laughs> so obedience is necessary because out of our respect for God, our reverence for God, our love for Christ, and we are subject to his authority. I saw a hand. Was that, Tisa, did, did your hand go up? Or, no, you're just stretching. No movements, please. Everybody good? Let's review quickly. Just give me the, you don't have to quote the scripture because I'm not asking for that. Time won't allow it anyway. He wore a son. What did he do? Hebrew writer says, no, though he were a son, he, yes, he did. In his obedience, he humbled. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience. How did he learn obedience? By the things which he suffered. And through his obedience, and guess what? In our obedience, will we suffer? We may have family members that may say, what are you doing? Christianity? You weren't raised that way. We'll go against what did Jesus say? I will put it at odds, if you will, at variance. Family, mother against daughter. We have family members that may go astray. We have family members spiritually that have gone astray. And we're concerned for their soul. But we reckon, and our prayer has to be, may they still recognize Jesus as Lord. There are those, and we talk to them, we just love you. We miss you. One of our last messages to a few folks is we're concerned about your soul. But again, I can be concerned about someone's soul, but we have to individually be concerned about our own what? Our own soul. If you call Christ your Lord, then where are you? What are you doing? Everybody, everybody clear? It's sobering. Yes, Brother Slocum. See, see, that's when you make me uncomfortable. When you say we got to suffer, I'm just, I'm, you know, you're not making me uncomfortable. But the mentality is, I got to suffer? 
How many of us like to suffer? Raise your hand if you like to suffer. Let me ask it again. Maybe you didn't hear me. Raise your hand if you like to suffer. So JV's going to speak on behalf of everybody. Nobody does. You're correct, brother. Hebrews 5 and 9. He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. And he became the author of eternal salvation. That's the playbook. Does the Bible speak about us suffering? I mean, outside of Christ. I mean, of course, speak about us as Christians suffer. Go ahead, Sister Lopez. Yes, and so it, it, it talks about, you know, don't suffer as a blank, 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 blank. Remember that? First Peter 4 is your scriptural reference. First Peter 4. Let's run over there very quickly. Uh, and quite frankly, First Peter 4 and 12, and Brother Slocum, you make a good point. We're going to add, we're going to add this scripture to the list. I didn't have 1 Peter 4 listed, but I'm going to add it. 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Don't be surprised. Don't think something is like out of the ordinary. The word is strange in the King James Version. But he says, beloved. This is 1 Peter 4 and 12. Everybody there? He said, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Why? And it's amazing. I've been in the church for a minute. Minute is in quotes. And since children of God still, Brother Slocum, act like something is off because they're suffering. None of us, as our spokesperson for the evening, Brother JV, said none of us like to suffer. And he's right. When we're in pain, we wanted something to alleviate the pain. I tried to be strong man, trying to pick up one of those pews, helping a brother. Uh, and let's just say my body let me know. Then I had to go right. I went right to Brother Hart. I said, what do I do for this? And he showed me and I did it here, here and here all night long to alleviate the pain. None of us want to suffer. But let us not think it's strange when we are tried. Another word for try. No, another word for being tried. Tested, proven. Someone may come up to you and and people were going to try to poke at us. But don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, fiery trial, which is to try you. Look at what he says. But rejoice. Verse 4, 13, 1 Peter 4. And as much as ye are partakers of Christ's, what's the next word? Sufferings. We are partakers. The word fellow partakers is a word in the Greek. It's koinonia. It means fellowship. So we part, we commune together. We partake together so that koinonia, the, our fellowship with Christ, with God and his son, Jesus Christ, and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We now are partakers in his suffering. So to live as Christians, we are partakers in the sufferings of Christ. And guess what's going to happen to us? We, we have to suffer. We don't suffer to, to the point of death on the cross. Christ has already been paid. But the Bible says in verse 13, we are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached, verse 14, for the name of Christ, happy are ye reproached. When we are put down, when we are questioned, not lifted up, exalted. A reproach for the name of Christ. One church? Church of Christ? No. You all think you're the only ones that are right? And by the name of Christ, we will be questioned. We will be put down. Happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. But Peter encourages us. We got to hasten on. Don't suffer as a murderer, verse 15, or as a thief evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. You do those things, there's, there's consequences. If I went and said, I need, I need $100,000 tonight, so this little Wells Fargo, the door's locked, but I'll get Brother Aldridge, he'll open it up for me. Now he's an accomplice to the crime. There's a consequence. First. But the Bible says, if any man suffer as a, fill in the blank, verse 16, yet if any man suffer as a, 
Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Says Lopez, did I see a hand? 13, let's go to 13. First Peter 4, 13. Go ahead, sis. Yes. Uh, what Sister Lopez, thank you, Romana. Uh, what that, what Sister Lopez mentioned is when we recognize the blessing of suffering, a woman when she's in travail, in labor, there's pain, but then there's joy. There's joy when we and so the Peter is saying we would have to go through something when you know that someone's talking about you because of your walk with Christ. Don't sit here and say, oh, they're talking about me. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hold your head up. And you and again, don't don't retaliate. And say, you're, you know, again, we take some self-control, it takes some humility. But when you recognize that those that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So when you're persecuted for being honest, persecuted for treating people the right way on the name of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Quit. And again, we need to stop. Don't play the victim. Don't play the victim. There are some children of God that have left the Lord's church because things got too no, there's a hotter place. Man mistreating you is the blessing on behalf of Christ. Now, don't go beat up somebody and say, they're putting handcuffs on me. I'm the victim. No, you just beat up somebody. You need to cool off somewhere. You just did something that was unlawful. You need to. There's a consequence. Romans 13. So I love that, sis. Hermana means sister. So I want to make sure that he's like he's up there speaking in tongues. I want to give the translation. <laughs> so doing God's will. What does the word iniquity mean? You heard it on Sunday. Just on behalf of the preacher, I want to make sure. Iniquity. What does it mean, uh, Brother Daryl? Lawlessness. Now, lawlessness, uh, what's the purpose of the law? The laws are written for law-abiding citizens. The laws are written for lawless people. So this is what you need. This is what you need to conform to, right? So in Matthew chapter 7, we can't exhaust it. Matthew chapter 7, very quickly. Let's start in verse, about verse 21. The second phase of this lesson, and the lesson is, again, the necessity of obedience. We show our obedience because we love God. We show our obedience because we are subject, subject to our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. We are obedient because uh, we have to learn, as Christ learned, through suffering. And you, you grow. I mean, as I, as I look at this audience and as I think about uh, – not, not everybody, and whether I've met with you individually or we've met collectively uh, as we fellowship, even as we learn and go through things personally, you, you grow. You learn what I should have done, what I mean, and it's a beautiful thing. I, I can say uh, assuredly, there have been times where I've sat down with members of this congregation, and let's say we bumped heads on something, but it, it makes us stronger because we can talk to one another. And when you come in with the mentality of, I love God, I love my brother and my sister, we can get through anything, folks. So please recognize, as we talk about interpersonal skills, we got to deal with people. Anybody here ever had any issues on the job? Not you, maybe you particular, but there's issues on the job? Uh-huh, yeah. When I get a text from HR, we need you to call me. I'm like, oh, here we go. And I just listen. I have learned. I said, okay, okay, I hear you. So we need to do that. So I like, I got three things. What, am I, what do you think my three things are? They're like, yep. I said, okay, have the meeting, have your mediation or whatever. As long as people are in this world, there will be issues. Saints, please get used to that. Not everybody's going to act right. Not everybody will do right. So iniquity, Daryl, means lawlessness. Matthew chapter 7, look at the Bible. Matthew chapter 7, very quickly. Matthew chapter 7. 
You guys are such a good person. You're so nice. Thank you, teacher. I was commanding you all. Listen to what Jesus says. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Remember the same Jesus said, Luke 6 and 46. Why and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? So now Jesus is saying, there are those who will give me lip service. Not everyone that calleth me Lord, Lord, you are the authority. You are my master. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Just because you call me Lord doesn't mean you're obedient. That's what Jesus is saying. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Hearers and doers. Lip service, Lord, Lord, I love you, Lord. You have to do the will of my Father. Now, why is that so important? Because Jesus connects his obedience with our obedience. Whose will that Jesus said we must do? Whose will? It's in the text. Thank you, Brother Aldrich. The Father's will. What did Jesus do? The Father's will. So he, Jesus, and even when what he says, he's giving all glory to God the Father. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. How much authority did the Father give to Jesus? Give me a scripture. I knew you were going to, I knew you were going to, everyone going to say all. Give me a scripture. JV's the only one that raised his hand, first of all. I told you all in the beginning, I should not have to remind you, Brother Slocum, Brother Aldrich. You guys are getting comfortable now. <laughs> okay, so JV, thank you for being obedient. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Amen. Amen. Matthew 28, 18. All power, all authority is given, given unto me. Where? Heaven and earth. So Jesus says, although I have all power, it's been given to me, still got to do the will of the Father. Think about that. People are like, well, I'm, I'm okay with God. I'm okay with God. Then why have you not obeyed Christ? He's the authority. So when we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, we obey his authority. So let's finish this, this verse. Yeah. Verse 21. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And so as we close out, saints, I mean, we're going to talk about maybe I have to bring this up in the invitation. We'll finish 22 and following. It's important we recognize that Christ's obedience was to the Father. Our obedience is to the Father. and But God made him Lord and Christ. In order to please the Father, we must obey the, must obey the Son. Thank you for your time and attention. Obedience is necessary. And it's not about just being busy. It's about doing the will of the Father. Always pay attention to, to the playbook. Let us close in prayer.